Well, hello everybody. Back to work. Anyway, I did a video, short video, showing a couple uh, pieces of test equipment I purchased, and one of them was this HP 1980B dual trace oscilloscope, or dual channel oscilloscope, I should say. And I was having some issues with the uh, with the readouts. The on-screen readouts would all, you know, kind of, uh, you know, they'd be on the screen and they'd scrunch up and then snap back to where they were and only be maybe half as... Uh, half the width they should have been, and then they're scratched all the way up to nothing, and blah, blah, blah. So I eventually tracked this down to the low-voltage power supply board. And let's see here. The, uh, let me grab a, a pointy stick here. And I think I got it fixed, but I'll run it, and we'll see what happens. But it basically came down to... A horizontal sweep circuit that generates the horizontal ramp voltage for just the characters and that circuit is right in here we got uh, this transistor here this transistor here we've got uh, this capacitor and this resistor here and so what I had done is I just simply I was testing here, and all the voltages on the transistors were fine, except for the output voltage. It wasn't quite where it needed to be. The input voltage was fine. The, uh, the reference voltage that this transistor gets is from this resistor here. There was 15 volts there, nice and solid. Uh, the voltage drop here was normal. But for some reason, I was still having problems. So what I did is I reflowed the solder on both sides of this resistor, both sides of this capacitor, both sides of this resistor, and because the this resistor and this capacitor make up the RC network that generates the uh, the the, uh, the ramp voltage. Uh, this transistor here is what resets the uh, the ramp back to zero, and this one just controls the voltage that you adjust through this trimmer here. At first, I thought it might be this, might be you know. You know, oxidized wipers, but that wasn't it. And then I went through and reseated all the connectors that come from the power supply all the way back to here. Nothing was working. The, this thing works fine otherwise. But I finally think I got it. And so... so but, but besides that, this thing is incredibly clean on the inside. The top side is, just, is where the CPU board is and all the ROMs are kept. But you've got your amplifier boards here. And uh, this is the uh, the power supply, low voltage power supply board, and these transistors here would drive the uh, the plates on the uh, on the CRT. Very nice, easy to work on. There's lots of room. It's you no, know, there's you know very few surface mount components. There's uh, I think some fuses over here that are surface mount. Everything else is all through hole. Very nice. Very nice uh, construction, you know, typical HP stuff. So, but anyway, let me power this thing on, and I'll put the bottom cover back on, and uh, we'll power it up, and we'll you know, we'll see what happens. Alrighty, I got the thing put together, but before I power it up, I wanted to show you the uh, horizontal ramp circuit in this uh, oscilloscope. So here we have the, the horizontal uh, character ramp generator. Now, initially I thought it may have been this trimmer here because this is where you set your ramp voltage. And I, I, I moved this back and forth several times while the condition was uh, happening, and it didn't work. It just simply just, you know, it... It, uh, it, 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 well, it didn't work, but it, uh, it was functional, but it was not taking care of the problem. So then initially, so the next thing I went, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's Q31 that's uh, going bad and, and uh, the emitter collector are going open. And then I went down a little further, and here we are down here. This transistor Q30, uh, short, because what happens is the voltage comes in here. That was solid, nice 15 volt rail, no problem. On this side of the resistor, there was the proper voltage. Down here, it was 6.7 volts. Everything was fine there. 
Here's a, a six volt input uh, padded by a 100 ohm resistor to the base. That was fine. And uh, this transistor here seemed to be fine. And so you get your voltage, you go through uh, Q31. And it sets the charge voltage for this RC network here. You got a uh, R106 to 33.2 ohm resistor. And then you got C40, which is I think is a 0 0.0. It's a very terrible scan, but it's a very, it's a small uh, uh, capacitor. And so this transistor turns on and charges the, uh, the RC network. The voltage comes out here, goes into this op amp, which also has another input that goes to another 15 volt reference. And this determines the horizontal position of the readouts. This transistor here, uh, when it's triggered, it closes and shorts out this RC network, and then once that happens, it opens up again and the ramp starts to go back up. So I concentrated here, because none of this seemed to be, uh, you know, uh, part of the problem. I suspected that maybe that was, but after a while I just went, no, probably not. I even, uh, maybe even, I'm starting to think that maybe this uh, diode was leaky, and, uh, sending a voltage back here into the base and causing this to close prematurely or partially close. But it seems that it was cold solder joints. So I reflowed both ends of R105. I didn't do anything with this because I'd have to pull the board out to uh, reflow the solder connections. I didn't touch this one because the voltage was fine. It was just on this end. So I reflowed both sides of R106 and reflowed both sides of C40 since I was able to get to them from the top. And I used my handy dandy ISO tip soldering iron with a microscopically small tip. And I was just able to reheat the pad and reflow the solder. So, with that out of the way, let's uh, power the thing on and, uh, and see what happens. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. And it looks like the uh, the readouts are fine. Cool. Yeah, they were sitting there and just kind of just kind of going, eh, you know, scrunching up and then going all the way to just flat vertical lines. But now it's uh, seems to be doing fine. One thing about this scope is it's pretty cool. I <laughs> mean, uh, it's pretty capable. This was uh, one of the HP's first in uh, scopes that you could get an option. Uh, to do uh, digital trace storage and uh, send the uh, traces out to a plotter or save them on uh, another computer. But, um, yeah, it's nice. It's uh, <laughs> one kind of an interesting feature or interesting thing on this is that the lamps that illuminate the buttons are all incandescent bulbs. There's The only LEDs on this is the LED display here. It shows you various parameters like volts per division, or if you press the uh, uh, display seconds per division, it will be displayed here on top of being displayed on the on the uh, CRT. It uh, it's a pretty cool scope. So let me uh, set this thing aside here, and uh, I'll show you some well, I'll show you some stuff on there. So here we go. Well, it looks like it is working. I've been running this thing for over an hour, and I haven't noticed anything weird. So hopefully I got those solder connections reflowed good enough. That, uh, hopefully I won't see this problem reoccur. But uh, yeah, this is actually, I like this scope. It's really cool. It uh, We have an empty panel here, though. It's for another uh, two channels. So I could make this a four-channel scope eventually. It, uh, of course, uh, uh, setting this is kind of uh, funky, you know, because you got uh, everything's controlled by this knob here. So if we want volts per division, we select that. And we use this knob to set the volts per division. Right now it's stepping in 100 millivolt increments. If we want to change that, we can press the find button. And now we can change it in. Finer steps. Step it in uh, one millivolt increments. 
Uh, same thing with the, uh, go back to that there. Get out of that mode. We can also do the same thing with the trace uh, speed and speed for, you know, the uh, amount of uh, seconds per division. So we click that button and we can change it that way. And depending on what the trace speed is, you can get, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but there's a kind of a, an artifact scrolling sideways across here at the uh, trace. It's caused by the, uh, the chopping frequency of the readouts and the main trace, so, but you can always get rid of that by turning the characters off. I haven't really explored too much with the uh, with the delayed uh, section, but uh, it works like a typical uh, delayed section on some of my other scopes over there. But uh, one of the things I did find interesting, I think I mentioned this earlier, is that all of the illumination on the panel is all incandescent bulbs. There's no LEDs except for this, which I thought was quite interesting. So, and. Uh, but yeah, it uh, seems to work just fine. Uh, one cool thing is this has an auto scope function. So if you can't figure out how, or just you know you just don't want to hassle with it, feed it a signal, and press the auto scope function, and it will set the entire machine up for you. If you press it just normally, it will set. Not only will it set up the scope, but it'll also just readjust all the brightness of your panel your LED readouts and uh, the trace brightnesses. So if you wanted to uh, set it up without doing that, you press the second function button and then press the autoscope button. And there you go. Sets it all up for you. We've got a menu in here that you can either restore the preset, you can uh, run some calibration in other utilities, you get the confidence test, Feature ROMs, this doesn't have any installed, so if I went to number four, there's nothing there. And uh, this unit does have, if we go into the calibrate, we can do a balance self-cal, which is really nice. So we can disconnect this, and we can run the, uh, the balance. So let's do that. And we're done. Pretty cool. And this does have the uh, times 10 probe, so when you put that on there, it automatically selects the right voltage, or selects the right readouts, actually, and, uh, and voila. If you have uh, two or more uh, probes hooked up and you want to identify which trace is which, press that button on the back of the, uh, of the probe and it bounces the, uh, the trace for you. But any, uh, let's see, yeah, it's got pretty much everything else. You know, you got uh, a 50 ohm uh, load that you can uh, initialize on the input. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much all I've got for now. But, yeah, I'm just glad it's working. I was uh, thinking of putting this on my rack and using it to uh, to test uh, uh, accuracy of, alt of uh, oscillators against my rubidium standard and all that jazz. Well, anyway, guys, uh, I think I'll let this go for now. But uh, it's a fairly clean unit. It has some uh, some writing on top. I got most of it off, but and of course it has. You know, it was covered in some uh, uh, some of those plastic, uh, you know, those roll uh, those stickers that you roll the uh, the dial on and, and click it, and it and it creates a, a label. Those were on here, and those were. A uh, real chore to get off. <laughs> They'd been on there for a long time and very stuck and very brittle. Uh, also, apparently, this thing has a uh, backup battery in it. And it's been working so far, but uh, it's located in the back of the unit. And when you disconnect that battery, it loses all of its calibration uh, uh, routines. 
or not routines, but uh, calibration set points. So instead of messing with that, I think I'll just wait till it fails and then I'll replace it and then go through and recalibrate it again using the uh, on-screen menus. But cool, yeah. Well, anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it for now. I'll uh, if I find out anything new about this thing or anything else that it does that's uh, out in the ordinary, I'll uh, see if I can demonstrate that for you. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, you know, happy trails. We'll catch you later.